May I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. St. Michael is closely associated with churches in these dioceses, including churches in Perry Square, Limerick, in Kilorglan and Waterville in County Kerry, and of course the monastic settlement on the Skellig's Rocks, one of the most popular sites on the Wild Atlantic Way. Culturally, the feast day of St. Michael and All Angels has been an important day for the church. The beginning of terms, the end of the harvest season, the settling of accounts. It is the beginning of autumn. And as children in West Waterford, we were told that Michaelmas Day is the last day for picking blackberries. As I grew up, I realized that this is a tradition or a superstition shared across these islands, from Ackle to Lichfield, from Wexford to Essex and Cambridge. In his poem, Trebetheric, John Betjeman seems to link ripening blackberries and the closing in of the autumn days with old age and the approach of death. He wrote, thick with slow and blackberry, on even in the light, lonely round the hedge, the heavy meadow was remote. The oldest part of Cornwall was the wood as black as night, and the pheasant and the rabbit lay torn open at the throat. But the former poet laureate had a more benign view of blackberries on a visit to the Isle of Man when he described wandering down your late September lanes when dew-hung cobwebs glisten in the gorse and blackberries shine, waiting to be picked. In his poem at the Chiming of Light Upon Sleep, first drafted on this day, 75 years ago, the poet Philip Larkin links Michaelmas and a lost paradise with chances and opportunities he failed to take in his youth. This is a day to allow the mind to wander back to childhood, to childhood memories, and a time too for contemplation and unstructured prayers, giving thanks for the beauty of creation. September is also the beginning of the church year in the Orthodox tradition, so this too is a day to think about and to give thanks for beginnings and ends, for starting and ending, for opening and closing, for memory and even for forgetfulness. In John Milton's epic poem, Paradise Lost, Michael combines the army of angels loyal to God against the forces of Satan, one of the best known sculptures by Sir Jacob Epstein depicts this in St. Michael's victory over the devil, seen on the walls of Coventry Cathedral. Yet Michael is mentioned by name in the Bible only in the book of Daniel, the epistle of Jude, and the book of Revelation. So many of our traditions about Michael derive from Jewish tradition. Rabbinic lore and the Midrash made Michael, the patron saint of Adam, the rescuer of Abraham, Lot, and Jacob, the teacher of Moses. Michael tried to prevent Israel from being led into captivity, to save the temple from destruction, and to protect Esther, whose story we heard about on Sunday. In the early church, Michael was associated with the care of the sick, an angelic healer and heavenly physician. St. Basil the Great and other Greek fathers placed Michael over all the angels and so called him Archangel. The Orthodox Church gives him the title of Supreme Commander of the Heavenly Hosts. In all our imagery, in all our poetry, St. Michael is seen as crushing or slaying Satan often as a dragon. Now, our ideas of dragons are culturally conditioned. For the Chinese, dragons symbolize gift and blessing and represent the majesty of the imperial household. 
In most European languages, the word for dragon is derived from the same Greek word used for a serpent. In European folklore and mythology, legendary dragons have symbolized danger and evil. We're warned in the Greek classics against sowing dragons' teeth. Most of us know that throughout life we're going to meet our own dragons. You've probably met them already. You probably know how they ensnare us if we do not face up to them and slay them ourselves. During the Blitz in World War II, the poet Philip Larkin spent some of his late teen and early adult life with his father's family, close to St. Michael's Church in Litchfield, where generations of the Larkin family are buried. There on the north wall of the church in a large, looming, sculpted image that predates Jacob Epstein's sculpture in Coventry Cathedral, St. Michael is crushing the dragon under his feet. Memories of this image and this churchyard may have inspired the imagery in at least two poems written by Larkin some years later. In his poem, At the Chiming of Light Upon Sleep, first written on this day 75 years ago, Larkin links Michaelmas and a lost paradise with chances and opportunities he failed to take in his youth. In his poem, To Failure, written a year before he moved to Belfast, Larkin realizes that failure does not come dramatically with dragons that rear up with my life between their paws. Failure comes with more subtlety in those wasted opportunities and lost chances that we fail to take. Throughout life, we have our own dragons to slay. We must learn to know our dragons, and we need to pay heed to the opportunities in life that pass far too quickly. To take the opportunities we are presented with, like Nathaniel in our gospel story, waiting beneath the fig tree, preparing for the next stage in life, the call to follow Christ. There may be very few dramatic conflicts with our own inner dragons in daily life. But in time, we may regret not paying attention to the little opportunities, the minor details of life. Then we do not notice the changes, the days passing more quickly and the years passing by. Philip Larkin writes, it is these sunless afternoons I find install you at my elbow like a bone. The chestnut trees are caked with silence. I'm aware the days pass quicker than before, smell staler too, and once they fall behind, they look like ruin. You have been here some time. Sitting under his tree, Nathaniel was aware of the opportunities and did not allow them to pass him by. And when we seize these opportunities, at whatever age we are in life, we may find ourselves prepared to see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And so may all we think, say, and do be to the praise, honor, and glory of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.